Relationship Advice. This is an update to a previous post. If you haven't watched that yet, click the card on the top corner or the link in the description. Update 2 and questions, I'm completely lost because I just found out that my, 42 male, wife, 36 female, of 12 years has been having an affair, from the police who called me in for questioning involving the assault of her lover. Update. I will start off again by saying thank you to everyone who replied to both my original post and my update. This sub really did help me so much. If I didn't respond to you directly, I'm sorry but I got so many messages, I can't keep up with them all. First, my son is doing so much better. He started therapy the first week of January. And the difference is already noticeable. I asked him if he felt comfortable with me talking to his therapist, and he said yes, so I've had a few discussions with her. According to the therapist my soon-to-be ex-wife would verbally and emotionally abuse our son whenever they were alone together. He was not allowed to make noise or bother her in any way when he was home. She would leave him alone for hours on end, and even overnight if I was out of town. She would then threaten him with being taken away and never see me again, if he told me or anyone else. The therapist said this has made him feel powerless, and dependent in a time in his development that she should actually be feeling empowered and self-reliant. So to that end, I have bought him his own phone, and helped him memorize family members' phone numbers, and as many addresses as are relevant. I've also been teaching him situational awareness, to pay attention to street names and how to read addresses on buildings. We've also role-played how to ask people for help. How he can clearly explain to strangers that he's in trouble, and he doesn't feel safe. I know this may sound silly, but my son can be a bit introverted and shy when he doesn't feel comfortable. Even though we've only been doing this for a few weeks, I can see that it's really building his confidence. Any suggestions on how to continue to build his self-reliance would be really helpful. His safety and well-being is still my number one concern right now. As for myself, I'm doing as good as can be expected. I started therapy around the same time as my son, and although I don't speak to my therapist as much as he does, it has helped to be able to talk through my thoughts and feelings, about everything that has happened to us and our family. The numbness is gone, but it was replaced by a white hot ball of anger in the pit of my stomach whenever I think of my soon-to-be ex and what she's put our family through. Funny enough, although I hate feeling angry, it's a lot easier to deal with than the numbness. My therapist says this is part of the grieving process, and it's not how we feel but how we channel those emotions that matter. As for my legal situation, well I'll be honest, it's the scariest thing I've ever dealt with in my life. I was awarded temporary full custody, and child support, which I didn't want, but my lawyer pretty much demanded we ask for, as well as a continuation of the order of protection for myself and my son. At the request for an order hearing, which neither my wife nor her lawyer showed up to, the judge asked if we would allow supervised visitation, but my son absolutely refused, which was why my lawyer told me to bring him along, the judge asked my son if he would speak to him alone, and he agreed. The judge, stenographer, and a child welfare officer went into chambers with my son, and met for about 10 minutes. After their meeting, the judge granted the temp orders and ordered therapy and psychological evaluation for my son. Luckily, the therapist he is seeing is somehow involved with, or accredited to work with the courts, so he doesn't have to see another therapist. My lawyer said this is a good thing, because it means his therapist can give a recommendation for custody. But it still scares the hell out of me that she could get some form of custody after what she put him through. As for the affair partner. I don't know much. From what my lawyers have gathered, he's alive but still in the hospital. I haven't heard from the police since my initial interview, so nothing new to report there. As for my soon-to-be ex, I still hadn't seen her since the day I was questioned until Thursday. She has attempted to call me a few times but I haven't answered, and when she called from another number, I hung up immediately. I have nothing to say to her, and I don't want to hear anything she has to say to me. Her lawyer requested a preliminary hearing for our court-appointed mediation. She was served the second week of January. She was there with her lawyer, and I know this will sound petty, but even with a mask, she looked bad. My soon-to-be ex was always an attractive and athletic woman. I swear in our wedding photos she looks like a supermodel. But now, well, she's lost so much weight it's disturbing. She looked sick and frail. She didn't even look at me, she just sat with her face down through most of the meeting. Long story short, everything they asked for was ridiculous. They wanted visitation during the divorce proceedings and shared custody after. They want us to drop the order of protections. She wants to cohabitate until the divorce is finalized, I'm not joking. After all this, she wants to live in the same house, it was so insulting that my head throbbed through the whole meeting, 
but it was all worth it for the big reveal we gave to her lawyer. Her lawyer asked how we should handle discovery for the division of assets, to which my lawyer got this shocked look on his face and said, what division of assets? Read the prenup. The look on her lawyer's face was priceless. She hadn't told her lawyer about the prenup. My late uncle, who was the founding partner of the law firm I use, wrote that prenup and actually hired her lawyer to look over it for her before we married. According to my lawyer, it's a thing of beauty because we never mixed finances, per my uncle's instructions. The house we live in was a gift to me from my uncle before we married. All the utilities and insurances are in my name. All the vehicles are registered in the owner's name only. And we never had to sign for any debt for each other. We have one shared savings account that is used for household maintenance and an emergency fund. It has around $8,000 in it, which she has already drained. There is less than $300 in it now. The prenup states that all marital assets and debt are to be divided 50-50, and ownership of all intangible assets and personal debt reverts back to the individual who accrued it. The adultery clause simply states that we agree that if either party is caught or admits to committing adultery, they lose the right to claim any form of spousal support. There's a lot more to it than this, but my lawyer assures me that trying to break this prenup will be damn near impossible, because it is the most fair prenup he's ever read. But the last thing her lawyer asked for was what has really messed with me. He asked that we postpone the official mediation for six months while my soon-to-be ex attends an inpatient rehabilitation facility for substance abuse. Some people in both my last posts stated that she might have a substance abuse issue, but I didn't even think about it, because I couldn't even fathom that. I talked to my lawyer and he said that we would discuss it and get back with him about our decision on that. Before we left, my soon-to-be ex spoke, literally for the first time and asked me to read a letter she had written me. My lawyer gave me the this could be a snake so be careful look, and I debated with myself for a moment but decided to take it. When I got home, I read it, and now I wish I hadn't. It started off with all those busted cheater platitudes that everyone warned me about. I love you, I love our family, I know I'm as treated, son, and I hate myself for it, I want us again. But she did explain that after a major surgery she had about two years ago, she started abusing her medication. After a while, she started buying them from some of the people she worked with, including the affair partner. He became her go-to guy, and when she ran out of money, she started sleeping with him to make up the difference. She said she hid this from me because she was afraid I would make her stop, and she couldn't feel right without them anymore. That he meant nothing to her but a fix, and she hates herself for doing what she's done both to herself and to us. Now she says she understands how awful what she's done is, and wants to get better for our family and asks me to at least give her some time to prove she wants this. Let me state, for the record, I will never get back with my wife. Our marriage was over the moment she cheated on me, and abused our son, but damn, where the hell was I while all this was going on? I just feel like the most naive, obtuse idiot to ever walk the earth. And furthermore, how should I approach this from here? Am I just throwing her away, or am I still justified in feeling betrayed? I feel like such a failure as a husband and a father right now. I mean, I feel nothing for her but anger and resentment, but is this how you treat someone fighting the demons she's fighting? I'm just lost and feel so hopeless again. Anyway, any advice would be much appreciated here. Now for some top advice. I love happy endings. You sound so exhausted and stressed, but I'm sure the next hundreds of comments flowing in will agree at how proud we are of you. You're a good dad. You're an empathetic person. You are completely justified in throwing her away to protect you and your family. It's the right thing to do. She'll have to fight her demons her own way, but not by continuing to hurt you and your son. I might not know you personally, but I'm so proud of you, and I just know you and your son will get through this. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I really did love her, but I don't anymore. Not after all this. Before that letter I was ready to rumble, so to speak, but now. I just worry that I'm kicking someone when they are down. Just be careful of that. Bluntly, she's manipulated you for a long time. This could be more of the same, especially since you hold all the cards legally so to speak. Keep fighting for your son. She made her choices. She wasn't ever sorry until she got caught. If she hadn't been caught, she still wouldn't be sorry. Hold on to that and keep trucking along. You're doing amazing, you're not kicking her when she's down. She did this with no regard for you and she abused your child. Stay ready to rumble, she wrote that letter as yet another manipulation tactic. If there's a restraining order, you should report every time she calls you. My lawyer said the same thing, 
that this is a tactic to get us to deviate from our strategy. The longer we wait, the weaker our case becomes according to him. Yep. You need to strike. If a snake stopped chasing an animal every time it squealed, the snake would starve. That's what she's trying to do, keep guilting you until you stop. This should give you confidence, because it means she knows she can't win this case unless you feel bad enough to stop. Don't. She didn't care when she was cheating. She didn't care when she was abusing your son. She didn't care at all. So why listen to the manipulation? Don't play the pick me game, tear her apart in court. Be relentless. She deserves every bit that's coming to her. This is exactly what my lawyer thought too. This is her attempting to slow down the divorce process to give herself a better position for the custody hearing. Now for the last story. My fiancé, 27 female, cheated on me, 29 male, and we share a child in common, and my life is literally falling apart. Over the last year or so, my fiancé had become hypervigilant and aggressively insecure, even accusing me of things I did not do. For example, one day I returned home from the gym, and she stormed outside confronting me asking, who were you facetiming? To which I said, no one? I literally just parked the car and started walking into the house. She said I was holding the phone up and my mouth was moving. I offered to let her see my phone and facetime history. She said I probably deleted it, that I was lying, before storming off and remaining silent for the days that followed. About a week or so later, she decided that we take a break. Which for me was so out of the blue. Things were getting a little better. We were living with her mom temporarily just weeks away from moving from Hawaii back to California to begin our new lives. I was devastated that this dream of ours may never happen. I wanted so badly to get out of Hawaii. During the break, I went to stay with my mom, who retired here in Hawaii. The short version of my mom, is well, she's a narcissist, OCD, with borderline personality disorder. Extremely hostile, confrontational, and all in all aggressive. My daughter, two female, stayed with me three days out of the week during our break. While staying with me, my mom has so far, snapped at me for leaving a drop of water on the countertop, threatened self-harm after she had a conference call with her husband and their therapist that went sideways, foaming at the mouth, scratching her arms breaking skin, asking me to leave. Luckily my daughter wasn't here when that happened. And has shouted at me, thrown things around the house, and continuously asks me any updates? What did she say? Are you getting back together? 24-7 all because it's convenient for her that we get back together so that I don't have to bother her and live in her house. Which further stresses me out, because she is constantly reminding me and bring back up already sore wounds I don't want to talk about 24 freaking 7. Furthermore, my mom is going back to California for two weeks next February, a trip I am coincidentally going on next month as well to meet my nephew. She wants me to go the same exact days she is going to California, so that we can return to Hawaii together. All because she doesn't want me in her house, because I don't keep it clean like she does. I mean, I'm hitting rock bottom in my life and she's so selfish. It's not like I'm a degenerate. I'm a former firefighter paramedic for Pete's sake, I know how to be an adult. As for my fiancé, she has just been partying with her girlfriends every time she doesn't have our daughter. Her Instagram stories are filled with revelry. And what really blew all of this out of control, is that I found out she cheated on me the weekend before last. I say cheated because 1, I never agreed with this break in the first place, and 2, I never thought that would even be a possibility during this break. It crushed me. It's a deal breaker for me. I told her it was done. Surprisingly things have been extremely amicable with her, and she agreed to co-parenting as friends. Now I'm left living with my mom, I have no car, sold it because we were moving to California, and I'm desperately waiting on my vacation time check and some retirement I withdrew from the fire department. A job I left cause again we were leaving Hawaii. The money takes 3 to 4 months to process. I don't want to be stuck in Hawaii. I've never been broken down like this. I'm such a positive optimistic guy, and my daughter and I are surrounded by toxic people. The option to get out of here and still move to California is open down the road. My ex agreed that she would still be interested in moving separately and co-parenting in California. But it's just scary. Such drastic changes in my life and my kid's life. Until then, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I can't rent my own place, buy my own car and burn all of my money, cause then I'll be stuck in Hawaii. But living with my mom is my childhood hell all over again. And for freaking Christ's sake, I just want my daughter around good people. SOS. How do I navigate this? What would you do? Thank you. Now for the top advice. 
Dude, get any job and rent a room somewhere. For now, don't spend money on trips to Cali. Be careful with the money, don't get back with your ex, be friendly but no more. Is no good to have a cheater around. And stop paying for her car. Your ex checked out of the relationship. She's done. Whose name is on the house? The car? Stop paying for the car. She has money to party, she has money for her bills. Get a lawyer. She's not your fiancé anymore, so your plans to move to Cali might be on hold. You need to figure out life and parenting after all of this. Get out of your mother's house and go crash with a friend. First of all, I want to commend you for two things. You have the courage to reach out even online. And second, you want to be a good father despite your BPD mother and, what sounds like, another BPD fiancé. I have BPD. I know how freaking awful it is for myself and others living around me. It's the reason I got help. Because I also want to be a mother one day. If it were me, I would try to find any possible way to get out of there with your daughter. Your daughter needs you as her rock right now. BPD is created from childhood trauma. It's a cycle. Your daughter deserves better. What resources do you have? Maybe living in Hawaii independently away from both women would be a good idea. For now. Maybe you're repeating the cycle with your daughter's mother. I can see why you'd want to get away from her. But you're confronting it all and are aware of the toxicity. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. It might seem difficult now, but compassionate honesty with your daughter will go a long way too. Maybe letting her know things aren't good right now, but they'll get better. Thank you for the input and for sharing. I'll definitely consider your advice. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.